Hello, hello. We are live on the Canadian Visa webinar. Hey, everyone. Can you guys hear us? Can you see us? Is it working? Um, I just want to test before we start. But uh, if it is working, then I'm Ilya, and I'm here with Marilene Quintana, who is the head of eVisa Immigration, which is a great visa company in Vancouver that helps people immigrate to Canada. Hi, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here today. Great. Yeah, it's uh, great to have you as well, Marilene. Um, I'm sure everyone's going to learn a lot, so we're excited to share some what's great news. Um, can everyone see us? Can you, is it good audio? Are you guys able to? Yeah, I guess, I guess people can uh, listen to us. Yes. Okay. All right. So a quick intro for those who doesn't know me. Uh, my name is Marilyn S. Ilya introduced me. I'm I'm responsible for all the consulting services at TV's Immigration as a senior consultant, and I've been helping Brazilians and other people around the world to come to Canada. And we are all very excited to uh, present today to talk about a program that was a promise for uh, over six months that we were waiting, and finally it is starting. Finally, is uh, happening. So I will explain a little bit about the program, and then if you guys uh, have any questions, we we can answer at the end, okay? Awesome. Thanks, my lady. Uh, so I know my sound isn't so good, guys, but I just want to make sure it's working. Can you guys hear me a little, a little bit? Okay. Great. Um, okay, cool. So, my, my, uh, what is this new visa? How, what's the, how does it work? <laughs> okay, so uh, first, it's a pilot project that uh, is starting on June 12, 2017, and it will be valid for two years. So, it's an opportunity to take advantage now, and then uh, upon uh, completion of this period, the government will assess if it was worth it or not, and then decide if it's going to continue, if it's going to change. So um, hopefully it's going to, to, to continue further, not as a pilot, but as a, a formal process. So um, the, the bad news is you do need a job offer. You do need a, a support from an, an employer. So you still have to do all the the searching process and counting with uh, Van Hack services to find a good employee, desculpa, a good employer, right? And then uh, based on that, if your employer is interested in hiring you, we can discuss with him the, the options through this process. The big advantage is definitely the processing time. So the promise is once you submit the application, it's a uh, two weeks processing time. That's amazing. Currently, especially for Brazilians, the processing time is uh, three months and more. It's because first, for example, in LMA, LMA process, the employer must do a process that would take at least eight to 12 weeks. In few cases, we can use an option that takes 10 processing days, 10, 10 business days for processing, sorry. But still, upon approval of the LMIA, then we would start the, the application for the work permit. So the full process will take close to six months. And at the end of the day, uh, most of the employers that are seeking someone to start working for them, they are not willing to, to wait for six months. But definitely two weeks is a reasonable time and they can definitely work with that, right? So this is the great news. Um, the, the other good news is uh, it's accessible to every person that has a skilled worker occupation. But in this case, the company would, be, would need to be part of one of the associations that is registered with the government. Uh, 
So there are several associations that are part of this uh, program. I would say one very um, active one is BC Tech Association. We, uh, Il and I have relations in there. We have been there presenting for them. So even though your company is not a member of the association, if they are uh, interested in the program, maybe it's an opportunity to become a member and then access the program. So for those companies who are members of these associations who are designated by the government, these companies can access the program through these associations for any occupation. So this is great, great news. Of course, must be a skilled worker occupation, but there is no restriction as long as a skilled worker. Now, there is a second group that we, we call uh, category B. That means your company is not part of any of these associations. However, uh, you still have a, a an opportunity for you in your position. For this, uh, we have a list of occupations that can participate. So, uh, for example, computer uh, manager, computer systems manager, uh, all tech occupations, including support, including electronic technicians, including graphic designers, including engineers, programmers, all these technical occupations are in the list. It's not a very um, extensive list. It's pretty much all the occupations in IT. And most of them, they only require that you have the prevailing wage. That means you have to, to, to receive an offer and your salary must be according to what the government determines that it's prevailing for that area, for that province. And we can access this information through the Job Bank website. So if you guys have any questions, we can uh, give you some examples, right? Um, but it's usually uh, also very standard with the market as well. There are only three occupations that they don't follow the prevailing wage. They uh, require a higher wage than the, the, the average. And these are ele electrical and electronic engineering technologists or technicians information system testing technicians and digital media designers that we consider are only for senior positions. For the digital media designers as well, uh, they also have an additional requirement that's a five years experience and has to include 3D modeling, virtual uh, and augmented, uh, sorry, virtual and augmented reality animation, level editing, editor, and pipeline software. Então, é, é, sorry, I, I started Portuguese. Uh, oh, it's confusing. Well, so uh, it's very specialized, not any graphic designers, more people in the 3D uh, industry, animation industry, and they must be senior. For example, for this industry, they are requiring 80,000 annually as a salary. And we see that it's not always the case for a regular animator. A regular animator must be usually between 50 to 70. So it's a little bit higher the average. So if you are a senior, you have a good chance. If not, uh, I think it would be a little bit challenging for you to, to go through this process. Um, regarding the documentation. So everybody with me, am I going too fast? I'm, I'm okay. Okay, 2D and 3D animations, yes, they don't, they specifically say, uh, so answering some of the questions, uh, they do specifically say 3D animation. So I would say not, 2D is not related. Okay, well, so um, regarding the documentation, so uh, doesn't matter if the employer uh, has tried to hire a Canadian, there is no requirement to present proof of recruitment. Of course, the officer may ask, he may want to see that the employer have tried to recruit someone, but there is no requirement to actually prove as an LMA application. But regarding the documentation, uh, it's very, very similar to an LMA application. So the company has to prove that's a genuine company that's actually uh, doing business. So they have to present tax files, they have to present that they are paying all the taxes and I would say 
this is also very important to consider because um, not all employers have uh, willingness to present all this documentation, to disclose all this documentation. Of course, they don't have to do this uh, to you if they if you guys uh, decided to hire a third party like us to provide a consultation and, and provide guidance to your employer and to you to get the visa uh, they will uh, most likely be more comfortable to disclose the information to us right and I would say once we we have their okay uh, their documentation is pretty much uh, reviewing everything, putting on the mail, and then just waiting for the application to be processed. Something very important, this application is going to be processed overseas, okay? So the two weeks is for uh, most of the cases, and it's directed for those skilled workers who are outside Canada. And uh, people who are inside Canada can also use, but this is an advantage for those who are outside Canada and it's very specialized. And wow, that's a lot of information. Very yeah, cool. I know, I know it was maybe uh, very quick, I would say. I was excited to share everything. Um, but yeah, that's it. Okay. <laughs> so okay. basically, guys, just presume, uh, summarize everything. Um, if a company, if you fall in these categories of these skills that are listed in the website uh, that we just explained, and you get a job offer, you'll get a visa in two weeks. So, very simple. Just get a job and you'll be in Canada. <laughs> it's much easier than it used to be with LMIA. Um, so now we're trying to see companies much more interested, and Ben Hack is talking to many companies that are interested in, in hiring people through this program now. Yeah, and we sometimes you have to educate your employer as well to tell them that there is this option. So most of the employers uh, are kind of scared about the LMIA. If you say, um, can you please sponsor me or assist me in obtaining my work visa, if if you say the word LMIA or they, you even say, like, I need your help, they will be very, very scared uh, because they don't want to go through the process. It's actually very, um, I would say, uh, very slow, the LMIA process. So that's why they usually don't want to go through. But uh, now, if you can educate your employer and explain that you have an opportunity to apply, uh, that um, is... It's going to be accessible and allow you to be working in Canada with a valid work permit in within two weeks. I'm sure that they you'll be interested. Something that I guess I didn't mention, it's very important to say as well. Uh, there is a processing fee for this application that's uh, $1,000. And of course, if the employer decides to hire additional consulting, to guide them through the process, you'll be also additional consulting fee. Okay, so uh, they will have some kind of expenses as well, similar to uh, LMI expenses, but usually what they are more scared of is not uh, having a good person in their workforce. And if you're skilled, they, they will do this for you. And the other uh, usually uh, problem that we have before uh this uh program came to 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 uh to exist was the the processing time so now this is also not a problem anymore and this is good news yeah that's really great news uh we're, we're excited to see how things will, will work and how much faster it will be and just to clarify that fee is not paid by the candidate so you as the employee won't pay it's paid for by companies so this program is completely free for you as a applicant. So you don't have to post, or sorry, you have to pay more for uh, for a visa program um, if you get a job. So also, what's what's the minimum, or how how long does the visa you get? Is it a one year visa, a two year visa? The, what's that process? Okay, so uh, I'm seeing some of the questions of uh, those uh, in the chat. So it's not a LMIA, 
It's similar to LMIA, but it's a way easier, a way faster and more effective. And the officer making a decision will decide for the duration of the work permit that we are expecting to be for two years. Awesome, awesome. So okay. th that, that makes it so in one year, you just you can apply for Canadian Grand Five and get the uh, permanent residency. Correct. Basically, if you get this and you keep your job for one year, you're going to be Canadian permanent residency. Correct. Yeah. That's, that's the deal. Great. So this is definitely a great pathway for everybody to pursue for uh, Canadian immigration and coming with a, a job already in the work permit. And something very interesting as well that I would like to say is that uh, the company spouse can also benefit from this visa. So um, if, uh, if someone is like the main applicant is uh, coming with the work visa through this process, the global talent stream, then the wife can also come with the work permit as a company spouse. And if you guys have children, all the children as well uh, can come as a student and be eligible to study for free at the public institutions in Canada. So this is very, very interesting. I see another question from, from uh, Mauricio that's participating in the webinar regarding the English test. No. There is no requirement for you to present an English test. Of course, for you to get a job, you have to communicate with your employer. You have to go through interviews. And if you say, like, I have no English at all, I don't speak any word, you are not likely to get a job. But if you can communicate and you can work, and why not? There is no requirement. It's also an opportunity for you to come as a worker, even though you are not so, uh, like, proficient in English and take this opportunity to, uh, once you come here, improve your English skills to to then apply for immigration. For sure, for sure. And another great question is, if you get this job offer, can you use that for Express to have ever some 200 points or some 50 points depending on the outcome? Yes, you can, as long as your contract is uh, for at least one year. So every time that you get a work permit that's employer specific, meaning was issued based on the support of an employer, then you can use as a qualifying job offer for the express entry. And if the uh, occupation is uh, zero A or B, you'll be 50 points. If it's double zero, would be um, 200 points. Awesome, awesome. Um, so many questions here, guys. Keep them coming. I'm trying to... <laughs> keep up in the chat uh, but yeah so a lot of little details here um, Daniel uh, no minimum employees I'm oh, sorry or uh, maximum employees so a company can bring in critically as many employees as they want but they have to be proving that they need these candidates and create plans to show that they're also benefiting the Canadian market um, and definitely something that I think the government's going to keep an eye on but I wouldn't worry about that because if you are doing a good job, you get, you'll get hired and that's all that matters. Yeah, it's something very, it's a requirement as well that the company has to prove that they are making efforts to train Canadians. And that's going to be like, um, let's say, um, something to assist them to grow and not something that they will always rely to have uh, foreign workers in their workforce. So one of the, the process that the company has to commit in order to participate in this program is to train more people, to uh, consider hiring international graduates or people that, not international graduates, sorry, just uh, recently graduated people in Canada and train them and also assist you with the permanent residency is one of the options because uh, you won't need to use this process over and over. You come and you use it once. And then once you are here, the company assisting you to become a permanent resident of Canada, you become a talent in Canada, for Canada. And that's the, what the government is looking for. Um, someone asked me to talk more about the salary situation, right? So I see that most of you, I saw in the beginning, some of the comments that you guys are uh, seeking to to immigrate to either Vancouver or Toronto. Is that correct? Okay. Um, 
Okay, so I couldn't see the answers. Someone is saying that this, the, uh, they cannot listen to us. So do you want to check, Ilya? How's the audio? Um, I think it's working. Yeah. Can you guys hear us okay? Okay. Thank you for the win. <laughs> okay. Yeah, hard to I, I will proceed then. So uh, let's say yeah. I'll talk to the most popular occupation that's programmer. And I'll talk about the medium wage, the prevailing wage for uh, a programmer in Vancouver and Toronto. And I saw that someone uh, also asked for Halifax as well. So for British Columbia, uh, the greater Vancouver area, the medium wage per hour is $38.46. So I can calculate for you guys an average. So let's say 38.46 per year would be equivalent to 80,000 uh, per year salary that per month that's usually the figure that we are used to see would be around six to seven thousand per month so this is would be a median salary for a programmer in vancouver so the same programmer in toronto would actually make less money because the median wage is 34 13 so four dollars less So the salary would be seven to one per year. That per month would be around uh, six thousand. So a little bit less. Um, let's say Halifax. That I saw someone asking as well. Uh, it's in the middle, so it's thirty-two eighty-nine per hour. So it would be around five thousand uh, five hundred per month as well. So these are the prevailing wages for programmers in this case. Um, someone told me uh, if, if they can find a job through this stream as a physician. No. Why? Because physician, it is a regulated occupation, meaning you have to register and validate your diploma before you can work in Canada. And this is a long process that includes... A requirement for you to be a permanent resident of Canada before you can do the last test and then apply. So I would say the best option for those who work in a regulated occupation, for example, physicians, is to pursue the, the um, federal skilled worker stream without the support of the employer. And in order to do that, if you want to confirm if you qualify, we have a free assessment on our website. The answer is automatic, so you can just reply to all the questionnaire and you receive an email right away confirming whether or not you qualify. So this is an option as well. Uh, mechanical engineer, same thing. So uh, it changes a little bit in the sense that if you are a mechanical engineer, it's more complicated for you to find a job because you would have to validate your uh, credentials in Canada. However, sometimes you can work as a technologist or um, someone that's supervised by a senior engineer in Canada. So in this case, it would be possible, but I would say it's not easy to find an employer that's willing to do this for you because, as we mentioned, this program is more uh, direct to uh, what they consider very skilled worker people. And as a skilled, I would say, uh, more towards to senior. And if you are a senior, you must be required to have uh, your engineering credentials in order to apply. So I would say it wouldn't be for uh, any of regulated occupations, okay? Same thing for, um, let's see, biotechnologies maybe is an option, but then uh, we have to see that the organizations that are part of this process that can refer uh, the employer to participate in, get the work visa for the foreign national for any occupation is usually in the tech community. So it's most likely for tech not for all other occupations. 
So everybody that's asking us about nuclear energy or other occupations, I would say it's most likely not an option for you. You would have to pursue the express entry federal skilled worker. So um, I will ask Ilya, I actually can share with you guys the list of occupations that's part of the program. And I guess you you also uh, make it easier for you guys to understand the focus of this process. But I would say it's very focused on tech occupations. Okay. On the other hand, yeah. um, sorry, Ilya, do you want to say something? <laughs> no, I'm just saying focusing on tech. Yeah. On the other hand, like uh, express entry is in a very, very good moment right now, right? So the points are very low. And if you have a good English, you can apply to immigrate to Canada right away. You can get it and be become an, immigrate, uh, an, an immigrant in Canada and without support of any employer. You just have to get the points. So this is an option that you guys can explore as well. Uh, I saw about... Uh, UX IX designer, right? So user uh, experience inter interface uh, experience, something like that. I know the the terminology. I know that which stands for uh, kind of. And uh, in this case, as a designer, I would say uh, we can consider web designer is in the list. It is in the list, and there is no requirement for uh, a specific wage. So it can be the prevailing wage. So web designer and developers would fall into the uh, uh, user UX designer or developer. And if you guys wanted to know the prevailing wage for that, I can definitely tell you guys. Also for PI, I saw some questions. I'm guessing it's this not code. 2171, uh, information systems, and analysts and consultants, uh, but I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, for, uh, depends. Actually, at the end of the day, we have hours to see the duties. Okay, cool. And Andre, yes, PBA is possible. Uh, for everyone who wants to know the list of systems, uh, we like, got you know, how everything works. So it just posted in the chat. Uh, it should be there, I think. Uh, or there, I'm not sure what's that. Uh, but in the chat, and uh, just read through the guide, and then also if you send it to a company, uh, that that'll help them understand how to go through the process. So let's see if we have more questions. Oracle SAP, SAS. It is IT consultants. It's qualified for the position. Uh, and then we can, it's difficult to read all. Yeah, let me just quickly, uh, just want to go back here and, and can you guys hear me? Can you see me quickly? Um, I just, I Hey, can you guys hear me now? Can't hear. How you gone? I can't hear you. Alexander can hear us. I'll just go on. Yes. Yeah, they can hear now. But you guys are listening only to me or are listening to Ilya as well. Yeah, can you hear me, guys? My back. Madeleine, yes. It is back. Okay, cool. great. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I've never seen the chat so much. Uh, this is really cool. 
Okay. Um, so, so yeah, as I was saying, uh, if you if you are ready to improve your skills and maybe get a little bit of help with things, resume, things like this, um, to really get connected to Canada and get hired quickly, uh, we have that at premium. And we'll just do a quick flash sale for everyone who is uh, on the webinar here and to offer. I know we have a lot of premium members here with us in the, in the chat as well. Uh, so hi, everyone. Thank you, Rafael, Jim. Uh, I'm sure many others who follow uh, who haven't seen uh, everyone chat. But yeah, I uh, just want to, this will be available for the next 24 hours if you want to join. And uh, yeah, I, I hope it helps. We have a guarantee, so if it does help, we can always uh, get a good reason. So yeah, uh, just please try that. The link is just here. But yeah, let's go with it. So really, this program sounds like it's just all you need is a job. Is it really that simple? What, what's, you know, what might be some ways that makes it more complicated for people? Sorry, sorry. Um, I uh, can you repeat the question? Definitely, yeah. So what? Uh, so it seems like it's very simple, right? You all you need is a job offer uh, in the specific now codes, and that's it. Is there anything that might make it more difficult, or these people should walk out for the mistakes they might make? I would say uh, the paperwork. Uh, it's it's. Uh, very demanding on the employer so they have to be willing to to really bring you to canada and of course to avoid uh issues it's always interesting to have some uh help from a, uh, a professional and we can help so i would say the, uh, the documentation is very detailed. There's a lot of documentation. There's requirements. So some companies that are very, very new may not be able to apply. So the company can uh, can be new, cannot be too new, has to be at least two years old, I would say. And I think most of the companies that are really, really willing also to, to, to pursue this program are uh, small to medium-sized companies because they they suffer to 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 get the best talent most of the talents all, only want to work for the biggest companies and the the smaller ones sometimes suffer so if you want to target your search first talk to Ilya understand how how Van Hack works he can definitely help and also having a good resume and knowing how to do an interview it's very important and you always have to um, to be very aware um, of the requirements of the program so uh, you can teach your employer you can tell them what you need to do and if how you can help for them to consider you to continue in the process to be selected but I would say uh, it's nothing from your side pretty much you do have to prove maybe that you do work you did work in that occupation um, but there is no specific requirements the burden uh, is on the employer to confirm your experience. So you just have to, to do a great job searching for companies, educating the pot potential employers and making them so excited to have you that they will pursue the process. That's the, that's the, the I would say, the most important thing to have in mind because documentation on your side won't be required. Only, uh, like I would say, personal documentation pretty much like forms and passport and everything for a married or not, if the person's coming with you, the documentation from your spouse as well. But most of the documentation will be from the employer. So you don't have to worry about it. Don't pay for it. The documentation is not much on your side, but you have to get a job offer. So it's very important that you are uh, aware how to, um, how to communicate with these employers and how to educate them about the possibilities. Definitely, definitely. And I brought my mic here. Can you guys hear me better now? Okay. Uh, yeah, hopefully that helps. Um, definitely, yeah. So it's all about really how do you show your skills to a company. Um, there's so many jobs open right now in Canada. Uh, I don't know the exact number, but I know in a couple years they're projecting to be almost 200,000 people. Uh, great, glad it sound works. Um, so, you know, if you work in in software engineering, if you're a programmer, if you work with DB, uh, database administration, UX, I mean, all those skills that people are asking, if you're to, to relate to tech, then yes, 
100%. Um, there, there's a job for you, or there's there are many job opportunities for you. So I just encourage you to search on the Monster, LinkedIn, etc. This website and, and apply for jobs and let your employers know this program exists because a lot of them don't know. So you can use the blog post that we wrote. Uh, it's just backhack.com slash blog. I've shared it here a couple of times, so I'll share it again. There. Uh, and just tell them, you know, even put in your cover letter, hey, there's this new program. Just so you know, uh, there's this company called Backhack that, you know, can explain a little more, read this blog post, etc. cetera. Um, and and that, that might hopefully will help with them. We're also working very hard to find companies that are hiring, and we have a job board for anyone who hasn't seen. It's just app com slash jobs. Over 100 jobs there, or actually a little under now, 100 jobs um, that are in Canada and Europe that are open to sponsoring visa. Uh, so, yeah, it's uh, basically just it's either apply, so apply on the job, Benhack job board, but also apply to jobs as many as you can. We always say apply to a lot of a lot of jobs and you'll find you know, the right one. Uh, and also connect with people, networking, etc. is important. Um, here. Davidson asked if I sign. Um, yeah, exactly. So Davidson, you can join Benhack for just one um, for just one month uh, if you want. If it doesn't work for you, you can cancel any time. Um, but but you know it, it's up to you. Uh, and also, I just want to say welcome to to Benhack Premium to Penny. Uh, we just joined for six months, so welcome, Penny. Um, yeah. Am I good for not working? I see someone said it wasn't. Uh, hello, you. wow, hello, you have really good experience. Yeah. Uh, developer, uh, Angular 4, React, yes. Should, uh, should also have. Hello, you have a really, really, really good pet. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. So, hello, you definitely, uh, you know, make sure you have a good profile, good resume, good, uh, yeah, like good profile and start applying for jobs. You have a really good chance and it some, um, front end jobs uh, for you on that hack. So, should Okay, so uh, if you, uh, after understanding the problem and you think that's not going to be for you, it's uh, for some reason, you don't think that you have the skills or you're not in tech. So I saw so many people that are working actually for other positions. Maybe this is not the problem for you, but don't be disappointed, don't be upset, don't give up on Canada. You can still uh, pursue other options and you may, if you have a good English, you, you may be qualified for Express Entry Federal Skilled Worker, who's a, uh, which is a great option as well to immigrate to Canada. The points are the lowest ever. Yeah, so pretty much really it's it's been like quite easy to achieve eligibility to, to come to Canada. So if you have any questions, if you qualify or not, try our assessment too. Uh, it's evsimmigration.com. Uh, forward slash free assessment, free dash assessment, and you, you can confirm if you are eligible to apply. Um, so pretty much, uh, this is a great, great option. I, I see that many people, many people who talk to me every day say, I don't want to leave Brazil without uh, the assurance of having a job, without, uh, um, I don't want to, leave Brazil without knowing if I will be able to to pay for my expenses and, and take care of my kids, for example. And this is definitely a great option. You can come as a worker. Your wife can come as a worker. Your kids can come as students and study at uh, the public educations that are for free in Canada. So this, this is very, very nice. Um, yeah, definitely. So how many points at Express Entry? So it's it's not today the, the topic, but I can talk about if Ilya allows me. I don't know. Yeah, of course. Uh, so uh, Express Entry is based on English or French. Education. So, for example, bachelor, post-diploma, or master's, for example. Um, age. So you have points according to your age um, and also work experience so if you have a good English or French 
if you are like between 20 to 40, if you have good education, at least a bachelor or even a diploma for a technolo technologist diploma to three years, and you have work experience in Canada, uh, sorry, in Brazil for at least three years, you may qualify. And your English, if it's good enough, you for sure will achieve over 400 points. So pretty much the, the language part is the main component of your points. If you don't have um, if you don't have good English, um, it's an opportunity maybe to consider coming to Canada, improving your English, and maybe improving your English is it will also open doors for you. So you can um, get a job, get through the Global Stream Talent Program, and also uh, finish your immigration application as well. And the Global uh, Talent Stream is a process that will give you a one or two years work permit, but won't allow you to immigrate to Canada. So this is kind of a pathway for you to immigrate to Canada at uh, right. very low cost. If you are, well, for example, <laughs> yeah. If you think about it, right? You're getting paid. You're getting a job. Is, um, exactly, no cost, only benefit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, and, and also, um, just quickly, uh, if you come to Canada, so when you're working in Canada, um, you can get the Canadian experience class. So back to like education or maybe English level aren't so important, right? If you do local get the one year working experience. Yeah, uh, definitely. The class. Yes, there are several options. Yeah. So uh, you can definitely um, you can definitely qualify for um, Canadian experience class upon one year of experience. And talking about BC, BC has a great, great provincial program. So everybody that's, uh, for example, uh, working in BC has a great opportunity to apply to immigrate to Canada to the British uh, British Columbia Provincial Nominee Program. It's great. It's accessible. It's open the whole year. And it's an opportunity for you, even though you don't have great English skills, to finish your immigration application. So this is an opportunity as well. I would say uh, Canada has open doors right now if we consider all the programs, all the options that you can use to immigrate to Canada. We have, we have over seven options to apply. And it's, it's, it's difficult to, to tell which one's the most suitable for you. We can tell a little bit of everything, uh, every webinar, every um, meeting that we organize. But I would say it's, it's best if we can understand your situation, understand your priorities, and then design an immigration plan for you. And if you are interested, you can count on us for that. So I will also uh, provide our contact information from our firm, Evis Immigration. You can, guys, uh, if you are interested, you can reach to us and we can discuss the best immigration option for you. Sometimes even studying is, may be a good option as well because uh, once you are studying, the other one, the spouse can come as a worker and ask, also access the job market and through this immigrate to Canada, either through Canadian Experience class or BCPNP or even the Federal Good Worker class. Okay, so depending on your priorities, your budget, your timeline, we can design a program for you. Okay. Awesome. Uh, quickly, Julio, you, you, if you come to Canada and you're studying, I'm going to go like this, you can hear me right? If you come to Canada and you have a work permit, your kids take study in a public school for free. So all you need is a job, uh, a job, and, and which will get you a work permit. Uh, Victor asks a really good question here. Do you recommend coming to Canada to work and find a job? I used to say no to this answer, but now I say yes. With this new visa, uh, I think it's totally possible you come to Canada for one, two, three months, or however long you want, so, you know, up to six months, um, and then. Network, go to events, go to meetings, uh, meetups, uh, go to walk into a company's office and say, Hey, I'm a software engineer and I want a job. Uh, there's a really, really high demand for software engineers in Canada or any type of tech talent, really. Uh, so, if you want to spend your vacation or you know, maybe be working remotely while you're in Canada, uh, I would recommend you go and spend some time 
especially since now it'll you'll be able to feel what like to live there if you haven't been like there before. So maybe spend some, some time and really network uh, with companies there. Um, and, and I think now this will really really help you uh, to 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 be ready and to go. It's definitely an opportunity, right? We cannot secure that's going to happen, but uh, you yeah. can give it a try. And worst comes to worst, you had a great vacation in a beautiful city, a, a beautiful, uh, what I would say, a beautiful vacation, and you probably would enjoy yourself, make net, uh, contacts, friends, networking, that Network. even though Network. you don't get it right away, you can get it uh, later. Okay, I'm gonna try my audio with, with, uh, without headphones. Better? Not working. Call me, please. <laughs> Hello, hello, everybody. Can we have some? Okay, I'm back. Can you guys hear me? Being? No. Yes, yes. They said uh, no. Wait. Audio. Okay, I'll just refresh again. And oh. Okay, okay. it's okay. Yeah, okay now. So. Okay, I think when I'm using my headphones, it's working. Anyways, uh, I really apologize for the audio issues, guys. I I don't know that happened before. <laughs> Somebody asked me to yeah. repeat the website. So it's evisaimmigration.com. And if you are interested in our free assessment, it's uh, forward slash free dash assessment. I, I sent it to you guys on the chat. And I, I'm sure that Ida can also uh, share with you guys later. That's definitely just, uh, yeah, there's a lot there. Uh, also want to say welcome to Samuel, who just joined back at Cremail. So welcome, Samuel. Let's, let's rock. Uh, get ready. You gotta do a little hard work at it. But yeah, very, very uh, good to have you part of the community. So, okay, uh, we have about 10 minutes left, guys. I uh, want to be respectful of money and time. Uh, and so let's just spend the last 10 minutes answering any questions you guys have. Uh, Victor, yes, we re answer your question. We do recommend coming to Canada on a tourist visa to do uh, like an exploration trip. Uh, that uh, Kai Bobak is, is a fully remote company. We don't have any uh, permanent staff. We're not permanent, sorry, that's what I would say. We don't have any in person staff in Canada. Like everyone is remote. Uh, so, Ben Hack right now is hiring. We actually just hired someone this week. Um, but we have many companies that we're working with that are hiring. Um, but maybe in the future, we might have some more opportunities. Yeah. Cool. A any other questions, guys? No questions for me. That's that's interesting. <laughs> that I can hire me, Paul. <laughs> How is the Java marketing BC area? This is for you, Ilya. Yeah, no, I mean, Java is very, very in demand. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of companies. I, I think you can just find a uh, search on indeed.ca. There's a pure skill that you're looking for, and you'll see exactly what how many jobs there are. Uh, someone asked about the project manager. So I would say usually if you are the project manager for designers, it would be NOC 5241, designers or animators. If you are a project manager for programmers, for IT in general, would be uh, that NOC code, did, which is equivalent to the position that you are managing. For example, for a programmer, would be the NOC code for a programmer. Or if we're a software engineer, it would be the NFC code for engineers. So usually project managers are considered uh, based on the skill of the people that they manage. Or we have also the 2171, that's IT consultant. And I would say uh, it's a little bit more generalist. And we can uh, consider project manager as 2171. So I just searched 
volunteer project manager jobs. There are over 30,000 project manager jobs in Canada. Um, so there's a lot of opportunity. Um, it's, uh, you know, of course, those are all different so jobs. All the, our country, but I'm sure there's something on if you, you know, work hard and find the right, the right company. Okay, something very interesting. Uh, I was a project manager in Brazil, and I immigrated to Canada with the sponsor of an employer as a project coordinator for an IT company. So it is possible. You can come to Canada, you can find a worker, you can get sponsored, and you can immigrate to the company, and I'm the best example of it. Yeah, definitely. No, <laughs> and now more than ever, it's, it's never been easier to get a company to sponsor you. Uh, and to, to have you, you know, getting paid to move to Canada, really. Because uh, when you arrive, you'll be getting a, a good salary. All the tech jobs, well, pay well. You know, they have uh, $60,000, $70,000 Canadian dollars to start, which is a very good salary. Uh, and then from there, it just goes up, right? So uh, that's fantastic. Oh, that's someone asked about... <laughs> someone asked if I was in Canada or in Brazil. I'm in Canada. I'm based in Vancouver. This is a little bit of our cloudy day in Vancouver. <laughs> and somebody else asked about uh, business development and sales in IT. Yes, definitely it's possible. Of course, when you are a, a business analyst in IT or a business developer or a, a salesperson in IT, the English is very important. It's more important than when you are in a tech position, but it's definitely possible. I just finished a couple of applications for BCPNP as well recently with the sponsor of the employer for Brazilians. And we did uh, actually one business analyst. We did one IT coordinator. So, yeah, it's definitely possible. As long as you take care of your English skills, you can do it. You can get it. Human resources. So, Anna Paula is asking about HR. HR is also one occupation in demand in Canada. And it's not regulated, so it's definitely an opportunity as well. For the global talent stream, um, you may not have access unless the company is part of the, the, the associations because it's not an occupation on the list, but it's definitely an occupation in demand. For sure. Uh, also, as I was asked about Ruby on Rails, uh, we actually have a Ruby on Rails job right now uh, in Uber. Uh, so if you want to apply, I will share the link to our job board here right now, and you can find it uh, there. And it's just apply. That's the link there. So we have, I guess, a ton of jobs that you can apply to. And uh, yeah, come to Canada. This job is in Vancouver. Um, someone asked about the difference between the wage in, in smaller cities. Like when you come, instead of coming to Vancouver, for example, you would go for uh, a smaller city. So considering Vancouver, for example, we have Vancouver Island for a programmer would be $35 an hour, while in Vancouver would be $38.46 an hour. So the difference is very, very small. I would say not even uh, 10%. Right. So yeah. I would say you can consider as just to, to make it even 10 uh, percent less when you are working, when you are not working in a big city. For sure. But it's, I mean, those are all really good salaries. And I actually was talking to someone today about this uh, Canadian who lives in Fredericton, uh, in New Brunswick, which is a small uh, city uh, in the east coast of Canada. And they really, really need uh, technical talent there because uh, it's a small city, small population, but they have a lot of technical jobs and companies as well, uh, especially in information technology, actually. And so if you could these kind of smaller cities, they're a really good option because they're uh, lower cost of living, but many jobs that pay well. Uh, and you know, sound like this is fantastic. So places like Waterloo, Ontario, Victoria, um, Kelowna, Camps, Columbia, uh, even like uh, Calgary and, and um, and Alberta, and John's, uh, Halifax, and Fredericton, and there's many others, but uh, there's a lot of these kind of hidden cities in Canada that have a lot of tech jobs, so don't just limit your search to the big three cities. Yeah, so I would say one more question, maybe, and then we have to wrap it up. Okay, Waterloo is a very beautiful city. Um... Uh, 
a medium front end designer salary in Vancouver, I would say about starting 20 per hour average. So, yeah, I would yeah, say, yeah. uh, so uh, before I pass the word to Ilya back so he can uh, say more about uh, everything. So if you guys are interested to, in knowing your options or want to, be, to obtain more information regarding not only the global talent stream, but about immigrating to Canada, please feel free to contact us. Again, our email is contact at evsimmigration.com. We are based in Vancouver. Uh, we have a, a phone in Sao Paulo as well. So even though you call Sao Paulo, it's still Vancouver time because it's answered here. Uh, we will share the contact information with you guys at the end, or you can always go to our website, evisaimmigration.com and reach out to us. So thank you very much for everybody. Uh, thank you, Ilya, for the invitation. And it was a pleasure to speak with you guys today. Thanks so much, Marilyn. I really appreciate your time sharing all this information. And maybe people will listen to this and learn a little more about how they can immigrate to Canada. Great. Thank you. Cool. Awesome. Guys, so I, I, I'm going to stick around for another five, ten minutes or more and take questions until people get, get bored. Um, <laughs> so if you guys have any other questions about texting, jobs, anything like this, uh, feel free to ask. Um, I'm happy to chat. Okay. Thank you. I'm stepping away then. Bye. It was Bye very much. nice. Good. See you. Yeah. Enjoy the holiday. Bye bye. Yeah, I think you're right. The audio was from your phone. So yeah. People saying they can't hear me now. Yeah. Uh, Gustavo figured Hello, it out. Hello. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what do you? Are you you're still on the webinar? Oh. Uh? Are you on the webinar still? Yeah, I I am. You want to just keep, can you just keep the. <laughs> the phone on, I don't know. Sure, sure. Wanna... It's on. It's all yours. Okay, awesome. Uh, okay, guys, can you hear me? Okay, okay. so we're, we're <laughs> using some new technology, well, not new technology, but different technologies where um, I'm actually calling Mighty Lenny, and Mighty Lenny is broadcasting my voice back to you. <laughs> So uh, you're hearing my voice on, on speakerphone, which is uh, funny. So and, and my name, thank you so much for letting us uh, use your your phone for this. Um, no worries. I guess we <laughs> talk too much because you're uh, you have a lot of things to do. Um, okay, guys. So um, yeah, maybe not. So yeah, I guess that why I'm not so good. <laughs> Magic to the internet. Um, I'm not sure uh, why what happened. I'll check again. To make sure. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. So 
Um, and as we said, like the new visa really the is a game changer. Uh, this changes the way that immigration bill workers is going to happen in Canada. Um, this is really exciting. And I think it's going to make things a lot faster and a lot more uh, effective and you know, help you guys get to your goal of moving uh, to Canada with a great job. Um, so <laughs> I'm going to apply this big time fun. <laughs> yes, I need to. We need, we need some technical support, I guess. I, I don't know uh, what happened. Um, but anyway, I just wanted to reiterate that um, if you are um, you know, thinking of moving to Canada uh, and uh, this, this, is, this, this has never been a better time, uh, there's so much resources online to study to prepare, you know, that hack, of course, but there's many other uh, blogs, websites, videos. Uh, so just make sure you're, you're studying, you're really doing something every day. I like to say doing at least one action a day that will help you get closer to your goal. Um, kind of being a hack, yes, we definitely, so what that hack premium does, um, we, we help, we actually redo your whole resume for you in a Canadian style, same with your cover letter. Uh, and then we give you tips on how to improve your LinkedIn. Uh, because you can't actually edit your LinkedIn uh, since we don't have access to your account. So we just tell you um, how, what to do. And then uh, from there, uh, you, know, uh, you know, make sure you have a good profile that when companies see you, your resume, they want to talk to you and, and give you a job uh, interview. And then we also help you through the interviews. We have 40 hours of English classes per uh, week. There are, well, there's actually happening right now uh, on online class. Have with the Canadian processor, uh, where we're helping you with your presentation. We see the biggest challenge for talent usually is uh, not being able to speak well, to have good conversations, to say you know what they're doing, their skills, and, and share and show companies what those skills are. So we have 40 hours, uh, so basically one Canadian dollar per hour. Um, I don't think there's anywhere in the world that has this uh, pricing. Um, so uh, yeah, and, and, you know, think about the price of one hour of English class with the native Canadian professor. Um, I'm pretty sure that's like 50 hours or more. Um, so basically, you have 40 times that, or uh, yeah, quite that much. So uh, I think it's, I, of course, I'm biased, but yeah. So, so that's it. And so by the way, guys, I don't know if you saw my bad hack shirt, um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, gotta represent. Um, anyway, so uh, yeah, I, I think right now. Uh, you know, so the best way to ask employees, uh, how is the best way to ask for an employee in a job interview? Uh, so I'm not sure I, I, um, I understand what you mean. Um, I, I think, um, I, 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 I don't know what you mean there. Um, cool. So, um, yeah, I, I just uh, got a new email. So Eduardo, welcome to Van Eck Premium. Uh, that, that's awesome. Uh, so. Um, you're coming to Vancouver for uh, that's that's fantastic. Um, how's the best way to ask for employee employment in a job interview? Um, so Wilson, I think when you're doing a job interview, the company wants to hire you, so they're just hiring you. So I, I don't I don't really understand. Um, oh, sponsorship. Okay. Uh, so the best way to ask for sponsorship. Well, uh, I would just send them the link to the Global Skills Visa and say, you know. All these steps, uh, and, and that's it. Uh, you know, they they will probably know that they're going to need to sponsor you, uh, you know, before the interview starts. Um, Alvaro, how uh, could I do an assessment with you to check my skills and experience before I try a back? Um, yeah, well, you can just email us, and we can tell you uh, what um, we can tell you what, what you think. So just email contact at backhack.com. Uh, uh, I'm glad to hear. Uh, thank you so much, uh, yeah, for for joining us, and, and hopefully this video or this webinar is, is useful. Um, Marcelli asked the business L graduation in economics and post graduation administration. We're nice to come three years. Sales department good business always work has to get into the process. Uh, good question. Um, uh, I think it's your chances are good. I need to check here uh, what actual. Products. I think, yeah, the instrument systems analyst consultant, maybe. Um, I'm not 100% sure, uh, to be honest, Marcelli, about business and sales. Um, this isn't so clear. There's not like a specific not code for this um, in, 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 the, uh, uh, in, 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 the, in the group. Um, good idea to send a global skills views like in your cover letters. Yes, that is a great idea, uh, Kai, to send them and say, you know, I don't have a visa, but I can get it through this global skills program. The program will be on for two years for us. Uh, Amaral, uh, 15 years of training. Great, uh, very cool. Uh, 
Um, yeah, it's, it's hard if you don't have technical skills. Uh, Dev DBA, uh, for sure, jumps in DBA, Oracle DBA. Uh, there's tons of jobs for Oracle DBA in Canada. Uh, so, yes, you can definitely get a, a job uh, there. Hey, Pedro, uh, see you later. <laughs> um, cool. Yeah. So, any other questions? What else can I say? Uh, and the program is for all of Canada. So it's not just for one province or one city or something like this, it's all of Canada. Um, this is also the program, um, it, uh, like it'll give you a work permit uh, for, for two years. So basically, uh, once you get a job, you have two years of work permits. Uh, the, the work visa is tied to your employer. So you, uh, if you want to switch jobs, you have to go through the process another time with a new company. Um, so, you know, it, you're not stuck with that company, but if you want the new job, you do another visa process. Um, you don't need any language skills, so there's no need to take an IELTS or TOEFL or anything like that. Uh, so you don't have to spend money on that, which is good. Uh, and also, uh, there's no age limit. I know, so you could be, uh, you know, an 18 year old software engineer uh, who convinces the company to hire them, or a 58 year old uh, UX designer. Uh, it doesn't matter. As long as you have tech talent, you can speak and get it as well, uh, and, and that's it. Uh, it's not an open work permit. If the work permit is attached to the employer, um, don't quote me on that. I believe it's not an open work permit. Uh, but yeah, exactly. Tied. They sponsor it. Uh, but Hammer uh, Cell can see here. Uh, <laughs> uh, Guten Tag. Um, yeah. Marcelo is speaking German. Uh, you can at least have a diploma network manager and have a chance to go to the yes club, definitely. Uh, if you work with uh, computer networks, I think the top code is uh, um, they just have this computer engineers. Um, yeah. Computer information systems managers, yeah, definitely. So not code uh, 0213. Um, so yeah, uh, definitely. Um, Claudio, you have a really good chance. By the way, for anyone who doesn't understand what these NOC codes are, it's National Occupation Code. It's basically a way that Canada has a bunch of labor. So um, different types of jobs have different codes associated with that. So that like all software engineers have this code, or all designers have this code. And that's how they classify the different types of labor. So they have like skilled labor and like uh, so high skilled labor or low skilled labor. Um, those are two different kinds. of Things, right, so that like, maybe uh, a software engineer is, is one code, and um, I don't know someone uh, who works in uh, like a services job, um, like uh, works as a waiter, uh, has a different type of skill level. Uh, so that's just a way for that Canada to classify what kind of labor they like. Uh, so yeah, um, exactly, and you can see it all online. The Canadian government website, thanks, Kaya, for sure. I know this immigration is definitely a very big. And complicated topic, um, definitely not my specialty, uh, but uh, what I would say is you should you know, learn and see as much online as possible and talk to people like my lightning can help you with that. Um, cool. Uh, Ilya Luminous from Premium, will you have companies, will you have companies to the process or any companies uh, can do that? Yeah, so that um, specifically doesn't help uh, companies uh, like with consultation through the process. We can ask for basic questions, but um, Usually, an immigration consultant could do this. Uh, I'm not sure how this process is. I actually haven't looked through the forms as much as I would like to. I, it's been kind of a busy week. Um, but uh, I, I can imagine it's, it's not something that's so complicated. Um, and if the company needs help, we can definitely find someone to help them. So uh, that really won't be an issue, um, especially now, how much easier it is than, than it was before. Cool. Any other questions? Can I apply directly to a company? Yeah, Fernanda, you can apply directly to a company. There's no need for intermediary. Um, you know, uh, I, I, if you see a job online, apply for it. Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, cool. Okay, um, so guys, if there's no more questions, I'm going to go. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's... Uh, um, to a here and where I am in Brooklyn. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, uh, yes, I, you're actually speaking to someone. You're speaking to a Canadian uh, in, a, in a group of class. Uh, it's not a recording. No, it's live. They give you live feedback. It's actually 
actually a group at the name premium members here that can talk about their experience in the interview practice or just premium in general. That'd be awesome. Um, check out Microsoft Dynamics. Um, I mean, just check on indeed the dot, uh, DA. Uh, yeah, guys, it's pretty cool. I, I, the practice for me is like for premium because you really kind of get that feedback, that practice. You actually feel like you're in an interview. And a lot of our members say that they have that uh, simulation. It really helps them uh, once they go. Um, once they once 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 they go to a real interview, uh, yeah, <laughs> I sound like a robot. I know. Uh, all right, guys. <laughs> Where are companies can check out schools? Um, there's a lot of information online, um, so you can they can they can read our blog post that we wrote. Uh, again, here it is. Um, but also, if you just go to Google Skills, there's so much information online about this this program. All right, guys, one more minute. I, uh, I'm going to need to get some rest. Uh, it is a little bit late here. Um, so, yeah, Salesforce development, definitely check out. Um, guys, honestly, any technical skill other than maybe like COBOL, uh, which is like a very old programming language, there's jobs for you in, in Canada. There's a really, the reason, like, the reason why this case is really like this, like, you know, this is, this is a really big deal. Canada does not just, you know, make decisions like this, especially in government. So they really, really, really thought about uh, this program and put a lot of effort to it. They actually went around the country and did uh, round tables with different companies and tried to look as much as possible from the actual companies, the, the private companies uh, and the leaders of those companies, as well as immigration leaders, um, to understand what to do with this visa. So this, this visa is very strategic and, and it's, it's really, they want you, they want you to move to Canada. I know you guys really want to move to Canada, but just as much as you want to move to Canada, the government of Canada and many tech companies want to do uh, as much as they as much as you want them. <laughs> so um, really, this whole program is to make it easier, to take the barriers away in terms of bureaucracy, and, and to make it so it's fast, easy, quick uh, for you to go through the global skills uh, stream, global skills visa, in two weeks, uh, get across the time, and within one month or so, be you know starting a new job in a new city, in a new country, a new life in, in Canada. So, uh, yeah, um, I really appreciate you guys being on the webinar. Thank you so much. Uh, this is actually um, our, was our biggest web ever. We had about 350 people here. So, guys, that's really, really cool. And I appreciate all, all of you who stepped around so that, you know, the whole time. Um, so, um, thank you for that. Uh, and, yes, I'm going to go get some rest. And, again, just a quick reminder, if uh, you are, you know, need a little bit more help, really a little bit more guidance, uh, especially on the English communication and things like this, uh, ben Hack Premium, I, I, you know, we guarantee it is it, going to help you with that. Um, and uh, we now have a, have a promotion, a sale for it, forty-five dollars per month rather than sixty-five dollars per month. So pretty, pretty good price, and that's only available until uh, tomorrow uh, night at midnight. So uh, thank you so much again, and uh, have a great, great Friday uh, or your Thursday night and great Friday. Uh, and uh, for all the premium members, we'll see you in the Slack group. If you have any questions, you know where to find me. I'm Kaya, welcome to premium, and everyone else as well uh, who will join or going to join or whatever. But most of all, let's work hard, get you guys hired, get you great jobs, and uh, see you all in Canada. Uh, have a fantastic night.